Hi, this is Introducing HeartSync for those receiving ministry. My name is Mike James from Joy Skills Online. Have you ever said to one another, part of me wants to eat the cake, but another part of me knows it's a bad idea? Anyone do that? The cake may be swapping something that draws you, but another part of you doesn't really want. What we found is that you can have conversations with these parts of the heart and that Jesus can work in our hearts and bring amazing blessings for our lives. We found it fascinating because parts of our heart will hold the trauma that people have gone through all of their lives. Then there's a part of the heart that's kind of guarding and protecting all of that. And then there's a part of the heart that makes life work. And we found that as we've learned about these parts and understood the dynamics of the heart, then our, then our own hearts gradually got healed, grew our relationship with God, our relationship as a couple, and that's with uh, my wife Ruth, and with people around us also improved, and our lives got happier. Now, when I came to Christ, uh, one of my prayers was for the Lord to help me grow in my relationships. Now, 20 years later, when I was accepted for a doctoral programme, my prayer was, Lord, I'll do this programme, but if there's something else will, that will improve my relationships, then I'm happy to do that instead. And I did that and that ended up bringing me uh, to HeartSync. And my relationships have improved as I learned about the life model, which we teach in our ministry joy skills and through HeartSync prayer. And that is really, those things have really changed my life. Sometimes people say to themselves or think to themselves, oh, this heart stops a bit woo woo, I can ignore it. And other people say, well, it was all done on the cross. And other people say, just sort yourself out. And my response to that is this, there's no evidence that just sorting yourself out works for people or saying that it was just everything was done for us on the cross is working within the Christian community. We're all called to be co-workers with Jesus. We've got falling, falling leaders, high divorce rates. We've got brokenness. Just getting on with it, just ignoring it isn't working. Why is that? Well, many people want to reduce the work of the spirit to redemption and want to neglect sanctification. I'm meditating on this verse at the moment. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This speaks of God sanctifying us. Sanctification is growing our character, our maturity and our walk with God. And as we pray heart sync prayer, we co-work with God and he heals our broken hearts, grows our character, grows our maturity and grows our walk with God. I can still remember um, when my Old Testament lecturer taught us that in the Hebrew, heart and mind are interchangeable. And I still remember the confusion that that brought me 30 years ago. Subsequently, we found that it's true that the brain, brain science now tells us that we have the part of a brain, which is the size of a cat, literally a cat's brain. Um, so we've got a cat's brain sized part of our brain that flows through our bodies, including around the heart. The terms heart and mind were interchangeable in the Old Testament and they got it right because we because that's just how we're designed and how we're made. Now, there's a great uh, scripture in Heart Sync that it was built on. We all remember Luke 4 where Jesus says, The Spirit is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Now, as I said before, a Jewish audience would have completed the sentence um, like this. Um, the Spirit of the, of the Lord is on me to not preach good news to the poor when he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom from the captives and release from darkness for prisoners. So just as in England, we'd say Jack and Chill and someone else would go, went up the hill to fetch a bale of water. They would have said, um, he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Or when Jesus talks about he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted and he's a genius at healing broken hearts. And the Old Testament regularly talks about giving us new hearts. This happens at redemption, continues through sanctification. I mean, it's hard to love the Lord your God with all your heart when masses of it has brokenness and trauma in it. So we want people to be wholehearted so that they can love. And with Christians, it's been fascinating to me to know that often one part of their heart gets Christianity, but other parts of the heart are really are struggling with it. And uh, we have to dig deeper with the Lord and things then uh, begin to change. So, as this says, the human heart is divided, but works best when it's working together. That's God's plan for us. 
and in the rest of this presentation I'll just take us take you through a few of the basic principles you use then I'll, then I'll uh, tell you about what a session will look like so you can get an idea of that uh, when you come next to us for prayer so let's get into this so let's look at the aspects of the heart now here's the first two uh, parts of the heart common to every human being I'm going to go through them briefly and then I'll tell you some testimonies of what we've seen so function helps us as it says to function well it's our get on with the job side and then emotion is that part of you that tears up sometimes or feels something when music is played or, or like reacts when something is said um, or, or right when someone is with you and you feel connected that's your emotion part so let's look at these a little bit more in turn so function uh, got the image of a mortar board of teacher it it helps us get on with our job side i could have had a business person a worker bee on it and that kind of let's just do it lots of managers live here it also explains stuff also that's why i've got the the teachers uh, mortar there lots of teachers live in function explaining stuff function finds quick solutions lots of fixers live here um, function listens for actions for information for brief summaries it, it helps us earn an income he's brilliant function is great um, but tom hawkins used to call this part denial because it denies pain and trauma you might say to someone do you not remember all the trauma you've been through now i'm fine nothing happened to me because they just don't want to know about it that's our kind of function part most of us can recognize that bit of us and then there's emotion i'll feel a part this synchronizes with others it connects with them and yet it also stores pain people who live in uh, pained parts often find life overwhelming their past keeps breaking in through into their present so much so that tom hawkins called this pain this uh, pain part uh, just pain cause emotion pain because like sometimes it's just like oh touching a nerve and we have a pain part that stores the trauma and then we got guardian and i put a little picture up of, of the gates there when we sense trouble then our uh, guardian guards protects and defends us anytime things feel bad or scary guardian will step in it acts like a buffer stopping us feel emotional pain it's also our defense mechanisms it works a lot of people say oh you know my amygdala you know is that act, they're acting from their amygdala from fight or flight and that's that's what guardian really does we all need guardian sometimes it acts positively like a good shepherd however sometimes guardian can be aggressive or shut us down in in a fight or flight reaction now what what does guardian do for us well when we think about our painful emotions what do you think would happen if all the trauma and pain of someone's past got loose st just cried and you couldn't get out of bed you couldn't function you couldn't go to work well you wouldn't be much use to work you get fired so one of functions job is to cap that emotion that pain to keep it from getting loose so at least you can go make a living so you can kind of survive that's a broken heart like emotions got pain and guardian clamps it down so function can take us out to work but what happens is many guardian parts are pretty exhausted trying to keep this incredible amount of trauma and pain away from your ability to function and sometimes it breaks through when we feel that pain breaking through and then we kind of close it down so we can feel tidal waves of emotion happening and like you may start crying and wonder well why am i crying well your garden has got exhausted and, you, and your emotions coming up and past traumas coming through and you're beginning uh, to cry well this is examples of how um em emotion and guardian uh can can interact so father andrew who's the father of the the heart sync movement amazing man uh really appreciate he's such a warm-hearted guy incredibly effective praying for people and has put this together he he these are his definitions um and i wanted to be true to that to say this is this is what he's saying so you can pause on father andrew's definitions here if you want to look at those in more detail but let's have a little look at how function and guardian work in uh relationships uh, maybe ministries often many couples are functioning well together but their guardians aren't letting them connect and like when when the, when they're in an argument one of them says something and the other one is just in defense or attack and um 
and then when they say something, the other one gets defended. Uh, so much so that um, Carl Lehman, who I really appreciate as psychiatrist, just goes, couple ministry, I don't bother getting them to talk to each other. <laughs> he just gets them to spend time in appreciation and switch off their guardians, switch off their fight or flight before he even does anything. So that's what uh, guardian may be doing in ministries. Um, and so what happens is couples are just functioning well, but they don't really connect emotionally. And then a lot of ministries and families are connecting at function to get you to do stuff. And families are often based around doing stuff. And we often fail to connect and devalue accidentally creating what we call trauma of absence. Now, um, I came to HeartSync myself because I had a vision of what we call my true self. I had a picture of myself with a robe and a crown on and I'd had this vision. And a couple of days later, I heard someone online describe true self in the same terms. And I thought... The Lord is saying something to me. What is my true self? And this person said, if you want to find out more, uh, come to heart sync. Now, the true self is this is our is, is our fourth part. This is our integrated, protective, kindly whole self that acts in accordance with our deepest values. Our true self works a bit like a conductor, helping our brains to synchronize. And it's often invisible, uh, but becomes more obvious later on as we go through ministry. And we're not going to look at that in detail yet. Um, one person puts it this way, it's the heart or essence of the self and has the capacity to connect most strongly to God. And it's active when the prefrontal cortex is clearly online. Now, what happens in a heart healing session that we do in heart sync? Our heart sync sessions help us grow our character, our maturity, our walk with God and heals our broken hearts. We ask Jesus to meet with us, to be with us in order to integrate our conflicted heart, and heal our pain with his loving presence. This grows our capacity and well-being and reduces our pain, it improves our patterns of reaction, develops our relationship with God, improves our relationships, and it makes us happier, more peaceful and be more like Jesus. Pretty good things in my experience, and uh, I really recommend it. And what are the steps in a heart sync session? Well, we begin in prayer, a covering prayer, and then we, we connect with God. We spend We spend time connecting with God. And then we move into appreciation. And then uh, we um, explore, begin to explore things and expand them in a session. And uh, a session, we can do sessions. As, I mean, Reese was talking to me, she did a session of half an hour the other day. Normally the, the, the shortest we do is 50 minutes. Um, and sometimes they run uh, a lot longer. So um, in the heart sink movement some people will, will do two hour sessions so it depends who you go to how much time that you have but we'll always go through uh, this sequencing and i i normally like to do at least an hour and a quarter uh, works pretty well for me but if you, if you haven't got that amount of time that's fine we can do it in a shorter amount and uh, we want to say it's not a replacement about therapy there are some disclaimers you know we're not the latest greatest we don't mean need mean to take the place of anything else we want people to stay in therapy if they got a psychiatrist or a counselor stay with them we're a prayer ministry modality if we can help in any way and we're seeing people helped through this ministry then we're then then we're here to help it's that it's not about us it's about jesus it's about the lord jesus christ we do see people help but there is no guarantee and the outcome of prayer depends on numerous factors and so here's some testimonies received uh, by Ruth. That's my wife. Uh, if you come into contact with Joy Schools, it will be Ruth uh, praying for you. Thank you so much for the sessions. I feel like a new person and I feel I can see clearer than before. I've been looking for someone who understands my gift and my pain and how the two intersect. Through this, I found my sessions with Ruth really freeing. Suddenly, my vision be became clear. My emotions became less burdening and hope was restored. After each session, despite the tears shed, I find myself a new person the next day. God is in this place. He works through this ministry and has been blessing to me and mine a thousand stars. And I've been fascinated with the people that Ruth ministers to. Um, I'm, a, I'm a vicar, a pastor, so she does more prayer ministry of this uh, modality than I do um, in the public arena. And I've come across people who've been counsellors and done stuff for 20 years and then have come for a heart sink session and things have got sorted out. It doesn't always happen like that, uh, but it is truly remarkable. And the last one here, thank, heartfelt thanks and blessings to you for our time together yesterday. I feel so very, very different, lighter without oppression. I'm more in touch with my core self than me that was created to be. 
I love seeing all the parts of me with Jesus, reassuring fear and, and enabling growth. We're having fun together exploring life. Anger feels released in a good day. Wonderful sense of freedom. So that's some um, uh, testimonies received uh, by Reith over the last uh, few months. So here's a summary. Healed hearts, happier lives and closer to God with heart sync. We've got these four parts of ourselves. We focused on three of them. And as, as it says, if we're, we're trying to fulfill that passage. He sent me to broken up the broken hearted. And so we seek to co-work with Jesus in order to get that done. And what can you do next? Um, well, uh, you can book a session with Ruth. Um, you can browse uh, Joy Skills online. Um, you can see HeartSync Ministries. Uh, you can go back and watch the uh, in the the first video for leaders um, and uh, get in touch. If there's anything we can do, uh, be in touch with us. Lord bless you. Take care. Bye bye.